I'm Jeff Ruley, and I'm a postdoc at the Philadelphia Veterans Administration Medical Center and the University of Pennsylvania. I'll be talking to you today about my recent paper in epidemiology entitled Specimen Pooling to Conserve Additional Testing Resources When Persons' Infection Status is Correlated, a simulation study. One of the hurdles in adequate control of the COVID pandemic has been adequate testing resources. When resources are constrained, we can't do the number of tests we'd like. One approach that can be used to increase the efficiency of testing resources without needing additional testing resources is specimen pooling, where initially you take four to five individual samples, pool them together into a single sample and test that sample. If that test returns negative, everybody in that test is assumed to be negative. If it returns positive, all the individual samples within that pooled sample are individually retested to see which person or persons are infected. Some studies have shown that this can reduce the number of tests needed to test a full population by up to 60%. The limitation there, though, is that this requires fairly low positivity rates, generally between 10, below 10%. This is because when the positivity rate gets too high, the number of tests that will test positive in the initial sample go too high. Uh, so too many secondary samples are done, reducing the efficiency of the approach. One general assumption, though, in that number is that the sequence of patients are independent. So if patient one is infected, has no relation to whether or not patient two is infected, which may not often be the case. There can be the case where families go to be tested together, and if they had a common exposure, they may all be infected. So you may actually get clustering of cases within the test sequence. My research aimed to address whether or not this potential clustering would have an effect on that what positivity rate pooled sampling remains effective. So I developed a fairly simple simulation study where I simulated a sequence of patients who were correlated in their sequence of infections. In other words, there were more likely to be clusters of cases. When I ran it in the case of independence, we found that tests were similarly conserved as long as positivity rates were under 10%, as has previously been shown. But when there were clusters of cases, we showed that the positivity rate could be as high as potentially 15 to 20%, uh, which is much more realistic in real life settings where there are outbreaks, and that this pooled testing can remain effective even in these higher positivity rate scenarios. So this research is, well not definitive because it's a simulation study, is really a positive step in potentially using pooled testing in actual scenarios and settings and contexts where the positivity rate may be higher but there's clustering of cases. Um, I hope is that future work will look more into whether this clustering exists and also that this will help spur the debate on whether or not to use specimen pooling and pooled testing in real scenarios. Thank you.